church uh, reacted to the shooting. I think the images of these family members who had lost loved ones saying on television, we forgive the killer, had an impact on the country that was profound. And I think it says a lot about South Carolina, but it also says a lot about the role that faith plays in the state. And uh, if you ask people about it, they will tell you that the church was at the center of how not South Carolina responded, not just to that shooting, but to a pre previous police shooting and to a flood that was a thousand year event. Now you talk about race relations. It's a difficult issue in this country. I can tell you, and I know a lot of it is centered around law enforcement and police departments. So let me begin by saying very clearly, I know for a fact that the overwhelming majority of the men and women who serve us in law enforcement are incredible people who every single day put their lives potentially on the line for our safety and for our security. But I also know, but I also know that there are communities in this country where minority communities and the police department have a terrible relationship. I personally know someone who happens to be a police officer and a young African-American male who told me that he's been pulled over seven, eight times in the last few years and never gets a ticket. What is he supposed to think? He gets pulled over for no reason, never gets a ticket, no one has any explanation for why he's being pulled over. What is he supposed to think? So I also know that in this country there is a significant number, particularly of young African-American males, who feel as if they're treated differently than the rest of society. And here's the bottom line, whether you agree with them or not, I happen to have seen this happen, but whether you agree with them or not, if a significant percentage of the American family believes that they are being treated differently than everyone else, we have a problem. And we have to address it as a society and as a country, because I do not believe we can fulfill our potential as a nation unless we address that. I'm not sure there's a political solution to that problem, but there are things we can do. For example, one of the reasons why you see both educational and academic underperformance, not just in the African-American community, but also in the Hispanic community, is because a disproportionate number of our children are growing up in broken homes, in dangerous neighborhoods, living in substandard housing, and forced by the government to attend a failing school. A child that's born with four strikes against them is going to struggle to succeed unless something breaks that cycle. We've seen things that work. In New York City, Jeffrey Canada in the Harlem Children's Zone has shown us what works. You get in live, involved in the lives of children and you, you begin to address those strikes against them and you can see the same results you would get anywhere else in the country. So I do believe as a society we have to confront this issue in a responsible way because ultimately if a, significant, if a significant percentage of the American family feels that they are locked out of the promise of America, we will never be able to fulfill our destiny as a great nation. If I could, just a quick follow-up. Just wondering, on a, on a personal basis, have you ever felt the sting of racism? You know, let me tell you one, a couple things about my parents were extraordinary people. My parents raised me to believe that it didn't matter that they came from Cuba and that he was a bartender and she was a maid, that there was nothing we couldn't do. I do recall as a child during the Mario boat lift growing up in, in 